Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Agile Tester Sample Paper Discussions. We are in chapter 3 talking about Agile testing methods, techniques and tools and looking at some of the sample questions from here as well. We are almost about to be done but today we'll be taking some more questions to talk about in more details that what exactly could be a possibility of the question from this most critical chapter of this entire syllabus. So today we have the next question as question number 37. Let's look at the next question 37. It says, given the following user story, an online application charges customers to ship purchased items based on the following criteria. I think there's a very generic scenario when it comes to uh, shipping any of the consignments, it comes to some of the, you know, criteria which we need to take into account. And that is like standard shipping cost for under six items, then shipping is $1.5 for six to 10 items and shipping is free for more than 10 items. Now, if you quickly pay attention on this particular item, it clearly says that there are different criteria based on the number of items, what we have. And it do make sense that depending on the quantity of shipping, uh, we have standard cost $1.5 for six to 10 and then free shipping if you have more than 10 items. Now, which of the following is the best black box test design technique for the user story? Now, most importantly, uh, if I remind you quickly that we have not covered any of the design techniques here, but one way, given that foundation level certification is a prerequisite to this certification, they consider that you still remember all the concepts. And again, they're not asking you to solve this particular scenario by applying a technique. All they're asking you, what can be used as a technique, right? So they're not going beyond the syllabus. They're not going against the syllabus. They're just making sure that do you still remember the techniques because same techniques are pretty much applicable in agile methodology as well. I think uh, you must have an answer with respect to black box given the scenario because they're saying there is a range here below six items. There is a standard cost, six to 10 items is $1.05 and more than 10 it is, I think, uh, the free. So all they're talking about is mathematical ranges. So we have two possibilities to talk about. One is equivalence partition and second is boundary value analysis. Now let's look at the options with that context. So point is that you should always have your answer in mind before you look at the options. A, state transition testing, which is certainly not applicable. They say test the following states, browsing, logging in, selecting, purchasing, confirming, and exiting. Of course, that could be a great option, but this entire scenario does not talk about just shopping. It's talking about shipping and there are different charges for different number of quantity. So state transition testing does not apply there, but it is very well applicable on the shopping experience. B, decision table, does the following conditions, user logged in at least one time in the cart, purchase confirmed, funding approved, with the result of action of ship items. Now again, that's a transaction flow, not a decision table, because decision table is more of like condition-based action output, right? C, boundary value analysis, does the following inputs, 0, 5, 6, 10, 11, is exactly, and of course the max. So I can take the parameters on each boundary inside and outside, and I can certainly go ahead and apply boundary value analysis here. Don't be worried about the values, because sometimes they give you a little tricky values on the edge cases as well. So you might be wondering that 5, 6, 10, 11, I understand, but why zero and maximum? It's always the edge cases what we take, okay? D, use case testing, actor customer, prerequisite is equal to customer logs in, selects and purchases items, preconditions is equal to items are shipped. That is post condition, sorry. So again, this is not a scenario where we are talking about how the user will use the system because use cases are basically used uh, to reflect the reflect the real time scenario, real world scenario between a user and the system. So in that context, it certainly does not really make a lot of sense. So put together, keeping it very straightforward. The right answer here is C, boundary value analysis, that is test the following inputs, 0, 5, 6, 10, 11, and maximum, because the scenario contains the mathematical ranges. And only equivalence partition and boundary value analysis could be applied. And right now the option only says boundary value analysis. 
Well, moving on to the next question, and I'm really, really sorry that I had to change the look and feel because after removing everything from the slide deck, like titles and subtitles, I got so much spice to put this in this font. Of course, uh, if you're watching on a small screen, this would be very tedious to read because the scenario itself was very long. But somehow I thought I have to discuss it. Earlier, I thought I will skip this question just because I cannot accommodate on the slide deck. But... I had to discuss about it because this is one of those type of questions which I should tell you that you have to deal with these type of questions as well. So I had to remove all the titles and subtitles and then try to accommodate this neck to neck to make sure that the font is the maximum. So give me some time as we have to go through the entire scenario and talk about it. It says, question number 38, your manager would like to introduce exploratory testing to your agile team. He has received the following suggestions on how to proceed from previous colleagues. Okay, so number one, you're talking about exploratory testing. That means your manager is trying to introduce and he has received some suggestions from previous colleagues about how to proceed, right? So we are clear with what exactly we are talking about. And the, there are four colleagues who are given four different opinions. Let's read all four of them one by one and try to have some kind of outcome derived as we read each and every assumption okay number one user stories are assigned to testers who are completely new to the user story there is allocated allotted they are allotted 120 minutes allocated to complete exploratory testing on the user story testers do not need to document test or test results but need to log defects if any are encountered now exactly we need to understand first of all that what is wrong with this right or what is right with this because exploratory testing documents the result too but on a high level it does not upfront says that testers do not need to document any test or testers do not have to document results but they need to log the defect so defect logging is absolutely fine but it is um, test executions we do need uh, you know, high level results. So we do have a document, if you remember, we've discussed in the foundation level called as test charter. And the test charter is a log sheet of execution of exploratory test sessions, which contains all these information. And test charter is a mandatory document of exploratory testing. Without that, it is not an exploratory testing. So partially, I believe at this point of time that documenting test is still mentioned as a part of the technique, that high level. Like you can write one liner, but you still have to write what you're going to test. And also the results of it should be also mentioned, but on a high level. You don't formalize it. You don't write table based test cases, but you do write it. Right. So that has some objection there. Let's have a look on the scenario two: user story. OK, user stories are assigned to testers who have already uh, what is that? User stories are assigned to testers who have already completed risk-based testing on the some areas where there is a lo allotted 120 minutes allocated to complete exploratory testing for this user story. And uh, the team expects at the end of the 120 minutes to have a list of test ideas, including the data and the actors, results and issues encountered, and list of defects to be logged. Okay, with defects to be logged in the defect management tool. Now that pretty much looks great, okay, um, because it goes with completed risk-based testing because risk-based testing is formal approach which is supposed to be done before the informal testing because informal testing or experience-based testing is generally considered as a secondary approach to test any scenario. So given that the testers have already done some formal round of testing, that would be really great because that can be used as a measurement criteria. And then on top of it, if you are doing a 120 minute exploratory test session, that will give you better confidence and coverage, but not the minimum expectation. Also, they say that um, the team expects at the end of 120 minutes to have a list of test ideas, including the data and the actors, results and issues encountered, and list of defect to be logged in the defect management tool. That's just right opposite to this day. The colleague one, the colleague one did not ask us to document anything, but here they're saying we should document every single thing. So looks pretty good. When we talk about the next one, that is three colleague says a user story is assigned to business representative. The business representative is told to see uh, the system 
uh, sorry, told to use the system like the customer would on a day-to-day -day basis. If users issues are encountered, the business representative is told to inform the tester so that they can prioritize and lock the defect. I think that's another crazy thing because uh, we don't ask, uh, first of all, business representative to do what we are supposed to do. And moreover, if business representative is doing something, it is supposed to be acceptance testing, not exploratory testing. And whatever they are trying to explain that you know, the statement says the business representative is told to use the system like a customer. And then if you find anything, you tell the, def you know, tester to report a defect in the defect management system is exactly what happens in the acceptance test or acceptance testing. So this is not exploratory testing at all. Anyways, number four, a user story is assigned to a tester for exploratory testing. A tester is told to learn the functionality of the user story to make sure the functionality is correct and to include negative testing. There is no set deadline for exploratory testing to be complete. It depends on what is found by the tester. Documentation is ne not necessary, but defect needs to be locked. I think two parameters, what I would like to highlight here, a uh, scenario for, or you know, suggestion for is uh, not the best because number one, exploratory testing is not endless journey. You, as you saw in the first two statements, that it is limited between 30 minutes to 120 minutes of time. So you cannot say that uh, exploratory testing can just go how long they want to go. And second, documentation is not necessary is another contradicting statement, right? So we just have some kind of understanding from these four colleagues. And so far we understand that they have one or the other flaw in, B, in each one of them, right? So let's exactly see what is the question. So your manager, presents you with his conclusion about how best to introduce exploratory testing to an agile team. That means his thought about the four opinions is being discussed in the four options here. So you have to read each and every option and think about which one of these managers conclusion is correct. Number one, option A, scenario one. Again, now your manager is telling by concluding these four suggestions that scenario one is not the best way because in exploratory testing, documentation of test execution and actual result is necessary. It is not sufficient to log defects only. Absolutely fine. This is what we also concluded when we read the scenario one. B, scenario two is the best way because in this case, the tester have knowledge of user story already, which will help them come up with the test condition and ideas. The team is using Timebox exploratory test session the team is expected to document test conditions, data and user information, and to log results of the test. Issues are logged in a defect tracking tool, just like any other test technique. Now, here we did have a contradiction, if you remember what we discussed as a part of it. So we just wanna bring to that highlight that what exactly is wrong, right? Here, this would be one of the purposes of continuous integration, uh, sorry, not the continuous integration, if we talk about exploratory testing is basically known as experience-based testing approach and which will be of course effective as the tester running the test. The benefit of this approach is that the test to that uh, the test that will be designed and executed will influence the next set of tests that are designed and executed. But in this case, it's just trying to make a statement that you have everything predefined so come up with the test case, test conditions and ideas to be tested. So if you see, it says uh, the team expects, if you look at the scenario two, the team expects at the end of the 120 minutes to have a list of test ideas, including the data and actors, results and issue encountered, right? And the list of defects to be logged in the defect management tool. But the option B somewhere is trying to say that the team is expected to document everything, data and user information and log the result in the defect tracking system. So B is not the right opinion because exploratory testing is known as an experience-based approach, rather not like predefined test cases being written to be executed, right? So it's, of course, we can say that it is the best way, but the con example, the conclusion, what the manager is making is not the right one, okay? It's not the best approach because they are saying to have a list of test ideas, including the data and everything. And here in the option, they say document the test conditions and test data and information. That means one step extra. If I have the test conditions written, why would I need experience-based testing, correct? 
C. Scenario 3 is not the best way because uh, this could be describing system acceptance testing but not exploratory. Absolutely right. Okay. Because uh, it says that, you know, the customer is doing that. So exploratory testing is not a technique but an approach to testing that can use other techniques such as pairwise, classification, boundary value analysis, etc. So, you know, this is just another contradicting statement. So it can be, uh, you know, taken out of this. D, scenario four is the best way because the duration of exploratory testing should always be left flexible. No, not at all. Okay, it is not the best way because exploratory testing is always called as time box test session. So D is also contradicting. So with that context, I think the best conclusion what the uh, manager has made here is of course the option A, that is scenario one is not the best way because in exploratory testing documentation of test execution and actual result is necessary. It is not sufficient to log the defects only. So this was a little tricky question team. Let me just give you a quick summary of that. Here it was not about that you should pick up the positive answer that which one is the best way. Conclusion was to all about, you know, understand what was the best statement from the manager. Saying it is not the best recommended way but with the right justification. Saying it is the best way but with the right justification. Wherever like B and D they said it is best way, the justification was wrong. Wherever they said not a best way, the justification is correct and wrong. So you have to pick up the most important conclusion where it talks about the right way, like best way or not, and the appropriate conclusion or explanation of that as well. So it's not always don't, I think I'm pretty sure some of you was gonna come up with saying that, was it not asking about the best way to do it? Answer is no. They were asking what is the best conclusion, which includes the decision as well as the explanation for it. So that was the point. Anyways, put together, that was all we had because this is going to consume a lot of time. So I just kept it again, just limited to two questions and we took pretty much long. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.